okay, let's just close the door because otherwise we'll It's not that nobody else is welcome, but otherwise we'll have this outside noise. Well, welcome everybody to this uh, talk on uh, practical multilingual websites. To start off on a slightly informal joke. The linguist husband walked in one evening on his wife and he caught his wife with a co-ed in bed and he said well susan i'm surprised and she bolted upright and said well you shouldn't be surprised i should be surprised you should be astonished well i hope you'll not be surprised by the content of this meeting uh, session but i hope we will astonish you with some of the practical issues on multilingual websites uh, let me see if that works. Okay. My name is Marco Dings. The, I'll be co-presenting with uh, Angel Melguizo. He's actually the guy that is producing the extension uh, I'll be showing off to see how it can uh, be more efficient in your workflow in getting multilingual websites. We'll first have a short discussion on the available solutions, then we'll show some workflow uh, on the content, native assistant, what's in the pipeline, some of the practical things to extend, uh, what's already standard, and a summary. Well, first with available solutions. What do we have? We have native support for Joomla for translations in the core. That's great, but it's kind of cumbersome. It's administrative intensive, and there are some solutions out there that will help you uh, relieve that. So either you go native or you go non-native non in your solution. So the non-native examples that can help you include I don't, uh, the important ones are Falang and Joomfish. Uh, they extend Joomla and have their own administrative system and are not uh, tightly coupled to whatever Joomla offers now. Then we have the native uh, extensions. Those are the actual ones that help you translate and hook up to the native system of Joomla itself. So whenever you deinstall the extension, you still have this uh, multilingual uh, website uh, and yeah, everything keeps, uh, keeps running. So you have Giuseppe, that was one of the first ones around. Uh, I tried that a, a year ago. It's a paid extension, now it's available for Joomla 2.5. There's a relative new kit on the block, JDiction. It's a non-commercial one, it's available for 2.5 and 3.x and there's came fast trans there's a trial version and the commercial version it is available for 2.5 and the version for 3.x is just around the corner actually i tried josetta uh, and there was some aspects of it uh, that i didn't like and i ended up using fast trans at that point gdiction was not uh, in the picture and having done some multilingual lab websites i found uh, angel Noguizo, the creator of this extension uh, willing to participate in a pr presentation on this subject so let's go on with that what you'll see is some uh, traditional slides and then uh, at some point we'll switch over to what we hope will be a successful live demo where angel will be doing the keyboard and I'll be narrating and talking you through what you see on the screen at least you can see then that it's live that it's real and that you can ask questions and we can show off whatever features you think uh, you need to elaborate on afterwards obviously there's this video and uh, there are some other videos uh, also available on the website so let's first have a very short discussion on the native workflow uh, within Joomla. I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but well, 
basically what you start with the website, you create your categories, then you create your articles, your menu items, your menus and your menu items, your modules, and some other stuff. Well, th that should be fairly obvious. Then when you go to a multilingual website, uh, you have to do a lot of things. There, there's extensive description on the internet what you need to do. You need to create menus with type all and well it, it's it's quite a quite an intricate recipe uh, uh, to get it set up but it's doable there's a good manual out there mil multilingual juma demo demo cloud access.net talks you through all of that but it's and it's not the content of this presentation basically in a joomla website when you do multilingual it says okay just copy an item that's the easy part. Then you have to manually find and add all language dependent attributes, such as uh, uh, the categories uh, which are associated, an associated article with. You have to do all these kinds manually. Well, you could add some intelligence that would assist you with that, and we'll show that. Obviously, you would need to translate the items, which can be a hassle because maybe you're translating, you would want to have the structure. Uh, maybe for a dedicated translator to look at, but you would like to have some basic content to start with. And Joomla doesn't offer the of, uh, the uh, a programming aid to like Google Translate to do that. And then obviously you have to associate items. So you say, okay, this menu item corresponds to this one, or this article corresponds to that one. So whenever you switch a language, you end up with the correct content. All in all, it's fairly labor intensive. So we end up with this one, we have it already. And then we go through the entire process that we had uh, for the first side. We do the categories. We create uh, the articles. We do all the associations by hand. We're creating all the menu items corresponding to the one on the left. Do all the associations. Do the modules. Uh, there's some modules uh, that display articles within a certain category, so you have to display the translated items themselves. <coughs> and then you end up with A nice system where you have your categories for your source language and your target language. Obviously, you could have more. You just multiply the uh, the number of columns here. Um, categories are unrelated for Joomla 2.5. Uh, articles are not connected in Joomla 2.5. They are in 3.03 onwards. Uh, most of the core content is actually associated with the uh, each other so there is a relationship between that so that's very good menu items are associated modules are not related even in 303 onwards as far as I know at least so now we're going to see that was a traditional workflow now we're going to try and show you uh, the workflow as it is with uh, the eight of a component this is one solution there's more as I showed you uh, we will step back from time to time to show the difference between doing it manually in Joomla and uh, doing the assisted way. As for the setup, uh, Fastrans will help you with uh, that. Uh, there's a single button you press in the administrative backend, and it will do the majority of the things that you need to do in a uh, new website that are all described in this. Uh, a uh, very nice uh, presentation on the web, but it can be automated, so why not do it? Uh, it takes the pain out of some of the issues. There are some things that you do not need to forget, and I forgot, and then I said, okay, what did I forget? Uh, there's some plugins you need to enable for multilingual to work, uh, the language filter, language switcher module to actually be able to switch it, but that's fairly obvious. Okay, now for the fun part, 
the actual demo. Okay, go. Let me switch. <coughs> okay, now we are in the back end. Typical thing. <laughs> well, that will be the case. Yes, just stop the meddling by Microsoft. Okay, we're going to the fast trans. We have this translation dashboard where you have the overview of all your tools. Now, what you see here is the concept that's core to this. It's called translation set. So for a certain article, you have the Dutch version in this, uh, or whatever content element, uh, the Dutch element, English, French, Italian, Spanish, whatever something. We're first going to reduce this view to make it more visible. So we're going to focus on translation of English to Spanish for the uh, case of the example. And we're going to focus on the uh, park sites content uh, that's available in the demo website. So the park site uh, article menu items. Uh, first, we're going to select the source of language to the left to English. So it will only show uh, each row for the English language. Uh, then we can filter out the other languages, uh, Italian, French, English. Uh, working, working. Okay, now we have a more or less clean overview. Uh, if you use translators that are dedicated to Spanish, then they will benefit from this view because they're not interested in the French or whatever, something. If time permits, we'll have the ACL section to talk you through that. Now, uh, I think we're first going to do some categories stuff to show you. So we filter the categories. And the filter is already set to parks to uh, uh, have just this this item and what we see here now is we have a category called park sites we see there's an english version because you can edit that status is okay in the spanish version we don't see anything yet there's no id there's no status now we have two options either we add the content to the right or we link it link it to an already existing article. Maybe you have that article already translated and you just want to click this two together. Now, I think we're going to create a new content. So just click the button. Okay, now we end up with a two-sided display. On the left-hand side, you have your source language. On the right-hand side, we have the Spanish one. It's still a blank canvas. <laughs> what well, we do the magic and we will do the copy all and immediately you see it's copied all over. You see park sites here. But what's more importantly is contrary to the normal copy operation in, uh, um, in Joomla, you see well, here we have this sample data articles. And who am I old? It knows that the parent item uh, is this one in English because we told uh, when you start bottom up, it can guess that. So it alleviates you from finding that category in probably a long list and it's taken over. So if we now scroll down, I think we can probably see the park size. I do not know it. Okay. Now we have the content, which is obviously not very uh, uh, descriptive, but park size category. My Spanish is not that good, but uh, that's definitely not Spanish. So what we're now going to do, we're going to translate that. And so I could either call Angel and say, okay, par Angel, <laughs> how do I say park sites category in Spanish? But okay, we have this button called translate. That's, that's a very good translation. Okay, well, I'm <laughs> okay, th it's not a very good translation, but it's a start. Uh, in my setup, typically what I do is I do this basic translation and then I have some, na hopefully some native volunteers that will do the refinement of it. But at least I've got something and it's, well, the content is accessible at least. And you see 
same thing goes here. You do the translate and it gets translated into English, uh, Spanish in this case. So we have a simple multiple button click action and you've got your associated category. Now we save it probably. And then we wait. Yeah. Okay, that's the demo effect and due to the fact that we practice and probably. <laughs> yeah, I just put a one behind that here. Okay. Now this one's uh, it's done, it's saved. Now we can close it. And now you see that on the right hand side, we have some additional buttons. It says you can either edit that one, replace it with some other item, unlink it, or trash it. So in one line, you have the entire management of your uh, translation. Obviously, uh, this is the view for a single translator. If you have multiple content, uh, multiple languages, you as an administrator at least have the overview to see, okay, well, this is not done in, uh, this still has to be done in French or Italian or whatever. Um, if you change the article, we'll come a little bit back to that in one language, it will flag the other languages so that your translators know uh, which need to be, which items need to be updated. Okay, next, as an example, we'll go for an article. It's the same basic recipe, we just filter that. And since we chose the content carefully, we can still filter on parks, uh, not to have too many items uh, Sorry, I'm blocking your view, uh, obviously. Um, we're going to create the new article. Copy it all. Do the translating thing. Category is taken over. No need to look it up. Well, same thing here. And you've got your Spanish, or more or less Spanish article. Looks Spanish to me, but uh, since I'm not a native speaker, it's probably, well, it could have been Chinese. I'm uh, not Chinese, but it could have been something else. Uh, save and close. Done. No need, no more actions. A few clicks, and you've got your content. Okay, next. You can edit it, obviously. Yeah, okay, just show the menu items because that's also one, uh, that's, uh, we, okay, for your, if we prepared some fixed points in the presentation just to allow for a screw up in one point and then be able to continue on the next one because live demos is always kind of tricky for whatever reason. So we've done not much similar, so we're going to the, going to show you, if you translate a menu item uh, or have to translate a menu item in the native Joomla context, that's what we're going to show first, what actions you need to do. So, okay, I'll go away. Parks home. Say, okay, well, we're going to translate to Spanish. And then the first one is, okay, where the hell in this long list <laughs> do I need to put this? Well, that's given me a lot of headaches in the past. Uh, okay, we find it, we copy it process it and then you would say you're done well you're not done you've taken an english article uh, menu item which in this case points to an article but it's the english article you still need to go into the uh, menu item filtering it or yeah, i should have bought a faster laptop and now you see this kicking in, we'll save that for later, Just, but it, it, it's an assistance we'll talk about later in more detail. It's pointing to an article, but it's pointing to Australian parks. 
uh, that's an English article in the Spanish context. So, okay, let's find the Spanish one. And again, it's a long list, but we can filter it so it's a little bit more easy. But if you're like me and you have trouble finding some unique names, then you end up with a lot of names that are almost identical. And then I end up scratching my head. I think, well, which one was it? And then I have a multiple iteration process in getting the right one. But okay, Angel's good. So he knows which one to pick. We've got that one. Then we've got another one, the menu associations. You want to be able to switch between those two with your language flag. I don't know where to stand, but I'm blocking your view. So now we have to find the association for the other languages. So we're now having a Spanish one, but okay, which are the ones for the other languages? So you have to go through, if you have a multilingual site, for go through all these associations, okay, which was the end menu item in that? I think we're not going to go through all this, but, <laughs> the, 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 the <laughs> but, but the point is there's a lot of manual action. And if you come to think of it, it can be automated because there is some logic to the system and there's actually no need uh, to do all this by hand. So we're going to show you now how you'd life can be easier. So we're back again in the translation management dashboard. We have the menu items, the parks menu item, and you see, similar to the articles and the modules, there's no one, oh sorry, there, there's no one uh, non-selected. So either if there was a menu item selected, Max, you have a question? Uh, do you uh, also translate metadata? Metadata, yes, everything, all. All gets translated, if you wanted to, it's just hitting a button. So we're gonna now going to create a new one. Similar setup, Spanish here, copy all the items, translate the title. And the first things we notice is that, uh, okay, it takes over the menu position because it actually knows which was the, since the parent one of the English was this one and was already translated in Park de Australia uh, in Spanish, well, good guess, that will be the one. So don't need to look it up for yourself. Uh, same for the, uh, the, the parent item. Uh, and then there's the thing, obviously, which is also the article. And you see the English article was related to uh, Australian parks. Australian Parks as an article was associated to Park d'Australia. Well, that's probably not a good Spanish translation, but it's a good guess that that's the one you want here. So uh, maybe you can scroll down and show some of the metadata. Well, it's not filled in, uh, but scroll up, scroll down a little bit more. So, so you can copy and it gets translated uh, from, from Max's uh, view. So all the items that are in Joomla are copied over translated. So in basically two or three clicks, you've got a new menu item and it's working. And no need to look up all the things that are obvious. Okay, now we can close, save and close this obviously. Oh, the menu association, uh, it's the same thing. If there's one, uh, so for English, it's known, it's taken over. Uh, in this example, the other ones are not associated yet, but if they were associated, everything what can be automated is automated. So for me, that took a lot of pain out of creating that. So we close it. And we end up with a full set of translations. Okay. Next item. So as the last of the items which are not uh, processed in the, in the core yet, it's the same thing goes for modules. Uh, I 
to the best of my knowledge, there's no association for modules in the core yet. It is? No. no. <laughs> it will be in there probably, but it's not. But this is supported. And to me, it's convenient because uh, if I set up this system in a 2.5 website and I can just convert it with the associations to a 3. Point whatever website and I've got everything set up. So we're going for the module search. No. I just We're going to create it. So this is a articles category uh, thing. Translate it. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. And here here's the kick. All the categories that are in English, you don't need to select them because in the workflow, normally you start with the categories. They're already associated. So whatever you have in English, there's something that's bound to be the Spanish one. It's taken over. So two clicks again, you're done. <laughs> oh, sorry. The, uh, yeah, same for the menu assignments. Uh, if a module is assigned to a certain category, uh, I tend to forget sometimes, uh, it's associated to the same category in the different language. Anything that has a known association will be taken into account. There's no need to do stuff that the machine can do for you. Okay, now we... Sh yes? Oh, okay. <laughs> that's not a slide, that's a live demo. Yes, uh, but we'll uh, keep the question. We'll come to that l somewhat slightly later on in how it assists you in doing that because keeping track of that is also a pain. We'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, so just remember the question. <laughs> now the so summarizing, we have now this category that are linked articles that are linked and menu items that are linked and also it's maintainable it's tracked and we'll see that later on and now later on starts because creating a website is one thing managing it is another thing and once you give it out of your hands then somebody modifies something over here and then you have to or they have to be sure that change the, the, the other parts uh, and well things tend to forget and errors slip in if you're not totally aware and I'm using the concept because uh, Joomla ensures that it's and I hope it's not too technical but it's, it's syntactically correct but it's not necessarily semantically correct so it can point to a category but it's not necessarily the right category and a tool can help you with that in synchronizing that. So we're going to show that. So we're going to screw over a menu item, I think, and see what happens. So there's no uh, association in the, in the getting started. It's uh, So we could just copy it. So we go in menu items. We get it. No, it's not a problem. Well, 
one of the change requests I've put in is to have a preference setting for this, for myself, so that I have my preferred setting. Uh, so, so there's no association here. Yes. Ah, okay, sorry. Yeah. So it, it's syntactically, of syntac syntactically correct, but semantically wrong. Now we are going to copy this association into the Joomla application. Uh, so we, uh, okay. Basically, we have the correct association in the fast trans module, but we want to make sure that it's already native in. Uh, also in the native part of Joomla. Now you could come to ask, uh, th there are certain scenarios where this uh, can happen. Uh, there, there's this plugin, uh, and maybe that's good to say, uh, where you can uh, cross on, uh, check off the, the fact that you want to associate menu items uh, in Joomla. So if you started off with uh, this checked off and created the uh, associations, associations uh, using uh, these tools, then they don't carry over to Joomla because it's you marked it off in a plugin as being uh, not desired to have those there. Then, but if you change your mind afterwards, you would want to be able to have a standalone Joomla site even without this tool, which is fully standard and compliant. And that's why we want to synchronize uh, these items. So you can just synchronize them. And afterwards, we'll see that the says, okay, it's done. And if you now go back to the Joomla menu item itself, we now see that the association is here as well. So even if you start off with a Joomla website that's, well, like kind of half baked or whatever, you can just force it back into uh, a defined state so that you always have uh, or end up with a standard compliant website, not necessarily needing the tool. So, yeah, okay. Now we're going to the inconsistencies, and that's where your question uh, comes in. We're going to get. <coughs> So we have the English one, the Spanish one, and now we're going to introduce the inconsistency. Yeah, so, so we had, to start off, we had a good English category associated with the Spanish one. Now somebody comes in and thinks in the English side, I just want it somewhere else. So Angel's gonna change it to whatever other, other location, save it. And then you see uh, it's still loading. It's waiting for Google, translate google.com. <laughs> <laughs> At home, obviously, you have a faster connection, so this will not be a problem. Uh, okay, what well we'll end up, okay, we end up. Okay, we, we change it here. That <laughs> Why is this coming in? <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay, sorry. So we change it on the English side, and then the left-hand side, being uh, the source panel, you see that the Spanish section changed to red. So we only have two translations. So it means, okay, some red typically means danger. Something's not okay there. So, okay, we can now examine the Spanish one. We click here. And now we've got this screen. 
and you saw that already in the beginning and it reports the inconsistency it says for the Spanish version there's no translation found uh, because the, the, the there's something missing for the category in this case we change the category and it lists that there's no correct translation for the category at this point if you change multiple items you would have multiple of these inconsistencies uh, if you would change the menu association or whatever it will list them all so okay now i have to change that and fix that so changing or fixing goes th fixing goes there action Here we have some information, utilities module, selected, blah, no known translation uh, into English. Uh, so we change it to a new uh, element in English. For that element in English, the category, there was no translation, and that's what it's reporting now. If you would change it uh, to a different uh, category, it would report that there was a mismatch. Uh, there's all kinds of errors that can occur, and you get informed. But there's no translation here, so we can click on that create a translation on the fly translate okay for sake of now uh, we fixed one problem we created a new one but we got and with fixing a problem we always get a new one typically so we have a new uh, reporting uh, for the category uh, there is one uh, uh, in spanish now because we just created it by the fix but it's not selected so now first we have to go through the process of selecting that one here And for those paying attention, there's room of for improvement here because the knowledge is there. But obviously, not everything can be done in once, at once. And this already uh, is proven a lot of help uh, in reducing the number of actions you have to take in actually getting your uh, translations in order. So these are a few examples of listing the inconsistencies. Same thing goes for. Uh, updating something in one language it will flag that you need to update the other ones and you have this one page overview in your translation dashboard where you can see at one glance what you still need to do once somebody else change something without or with forgetting to tell you or somebody else personally i use this uh, as i say um, i've got a number of multilingual websites uh, up and running and typically change your start in the english side or the dutch side for me then i've got uh, some native translators and just every few days they have a look at this overview and then if somebody changes something on the dutch side they just got a list short list of okay these are the articles that changed i have to find out what update the translation and then all's good again well hopefully but there's no need to send the emails and say, okay, uh, James, I changed this, please check that. You just go to that list and filter on the items you want. And then if there's no items left to process, then you're done. No, okay, first we go to the... So again, what we did, uh, you have the translation sets on the tool side, fast trans side. You have the uh, associations on the Joomla side. For now, that's categories, articles, menu items, not modules. And you can just make sure that you copy between the two of them. Uh, you start with Joomla, you start with fast trans from an old side, copy it over to Joomla. So that in the end, you have a consistent, standard, consistent, multilingual site. When new items come here, they will be supported, uh, I am told. So 
Okay, now some uh, practical issues on the ACL, or access control. Uh, as I told you, I've got uh, some volunteers set up to doing translations. And well, they're volunteers, they're benevolent people, they mean best, but it's best to limit choice. Because as soon as there's choice, there's screw ups. Um, uh, <laughs> those familiar with the Spanish language should not change by accident the, s the French or whatever something so that's why God invented uh, ACL access control uh, we can set up translator groups for Spanish for French and that's what we're going to show uh, quickly because I think we are also quickly running out of time Even though we rehearsed, it seems to go slower when you stand here. <laughs> so, we have some user groups. Uh, that's the tags you put on a user uh, where they can hook in. So, we have a article translation group, French translators and Spanish translators. So, when you create a user, you can put them in here. Don't forget also to cross off uh, when you add a user. Uh, the say the content rights uh, part if you have that in your site uh, if you have uh, people responsible for marketing and there's a special group for marketing you should cross that off because otherwise they can't edit that then we have the viewing access levels uh, we have a level called translators you add your tra uh, article translators uh, into that you do the same thing for the uh, for some of the uh, other groups, uh, the registered and the special. Uh, so they have a basic set of uh, privileges. Now we're going to add this uh, Spanish translator. Uh, so he's already a Spanish translator, he's a member of this Spanish translator group. Then we're going to set uh, for the article translators, we're going to say grant access first to the admin login to sh show what's happening. So now we, we switch to Firefox to show this is a login for the French translator. So now we are in a separate session. It's not the administrative one. We log in. You should use copy and paste. <laughs> uh, translators, it's translator. No, 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 one up, one up, one up. That no, that one, I think. No, no, it's already Spanish. Uh, uh, <laughs> we rehearsed the Spanish one. Okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. We do the French translator. For the demo purpose, Are we sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> okay, we're now logged in, but you see, you can't actually do something, uh, but that means you can also not screw up something. <laughs> okay, now we add some additional privileges. So uh, for the French translators, uh, Oh, you were logged in, were you not? You were logged in. <coughs> Just take that one. Oh, 
Not that we were here. Okay. So, not much to what he can do in the back end. Now, okay, we switch back to the administrative part. Now we add the rights for the translation dashboard. Mission, so for the French. So we first set uh, for all translators, so that will translate to Spanish and French. Now we go back to the refresh the view. And now we see we have access to the control panel. But there's nothing much that can be done here. We switch back again. Uh, everything's grayed out. Uh, yeah, you can see some of the stuff, but it's grayed out. Can't touch it. So we're now going to uh, create access for articles. So in the article manager, go to the configuration part, and okay, we say uh, allow to create, uh, edit, uh, etc. Refresh, and it should become colorful. when we select articles. So if we don't want the translators to see the categories overview and only see the content, the menu items, uh, we can explicitly hide uh, those categories for the group translators. So, and doesn't show anymore. So we only have the articles. So now, okay, I was one step uh, too fast. Now we actually give the French translator the access to the content okay and uh, I think we'll stop here for given the time and I want to show some other things but bottom line is now we see that the French translator has access to his content or her content whatever and you can do that for whatever so you can have a frame gate system controlling who can see what and who can screw up what and who can manage what. Okay, well. So in summary, we have an intelligent pre-population of fields. I came up with that description to describe what it does we avoid avoid tedious repetitive tasks anything the system can do it saves time you have these automated consistency checks uh, which allow you to view the changes to your website without having to be actively informed you have your change uh, detection you have an overview and you can be in control or you're supposed to be in control at least more than you were used, used to be. If it's okay with you, I'll skip this one first. And yeah, yeah, uh, I want to skip. Yes, that's it. I'm going to skip to this part first, and then maybe if you're interested, we do that one because I want to have a few words on extending possibilities. Now, if you've got your standard Joomla website, but well, not every extension component is ready for multilingual. And at some point in time, you want to do some fixes for that. And I ended up with some tips, tricks, whatever, some things to help me with uh, this multilingual stuff. 
where it's not supported. To name some, and it's not to blame, but uh, J downloads, it's not multilingual. Breezing forms, that's one that I use, it's not multilingual. In websites, uh, web links, if I link to a Dutch website and I want to present that to an English viewer, well, you could do something more intelligent with that. I'll show you a few tricks. Uh, I'll race through them. They'll be available uh, on my website afterwards, so where you can just download them and use them. Uh, for me, uh, since then I've progressed a little bit, so uh, now I can write my own plugins extension. But I started off with using what I call my Swiss Army knife, uh, being the re-replacer uh, tool by uh, Peter van Westen. Uh, really nice thing. Also relatively complex, so don't be scared with what you see. Just well. If you can't un understand it, just admire it. <laughs> just be sure to have his keynote, then maybe afterwards you have some more understanding about uh, regular expressions. Okay, one thing, for instance, in JDownloads, if I have a description of a uh, download whatever something, I can only have that in one language at this moment. I thought, okay, but you can do that more simple, at least to me, if I enclose this with text, English, beer, text, and then text NL, NL, beer, it's the same thing, Dutch. Then if I run this re-replacer macro, it will know in which language it is, and it will replace this entire construct with the English term, if it's in English, and with the Dutch term, if it's in Dutch. Well, you, yeah, probably. <laughs> Yeah, but that's not my doing, uh, <laughs> something we take for granted. So uh, syntax being TXT, ENGB, whatever, you can change that to your liking. English context here, then it gets replaced. Well, this is the magic. Just admire it if you don't believe it. So you can add uh, a single text, something in uh, an article title, uh, a module title, um, J downloads, whatever component extension does not support multilingual, you can kind of tweak it in uh, if you need to. Web links, same as I mentioned, uh, I can have a link to a Dutch website uh, and I can translate the web link, but it still will point me to a Dutch website. And for English users, that's typically not usable if it's uh, only in one language. So you can do some magic where you say, okay, link this to from Dutch to English, do some magic, and then whenever you, uh, where you type in the normal link in web links, you type in this uh, link, blah, 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 link to a Dutch website, and then it gets, at runtime, it gets rewritten to translate Google something something and it will do the automatic uh, translation for you. Simple, I found it useful and some of my users do also so feel free to copy and reuse that. Uh, article, article inclusion, uh, same thing. Uh, what I tend to do uh, a lot uh, because to my users and even to myself at times it's confusing that I have to sometimes have the content in a module and sometimes it's an article so what I and uh, sometimes they have this form field they uh, have to put in uh, in a breezing forms whatever something and type their content in there uh, what I tend to do is set it up that I have this article inclusion in there uh, so they just end up editing articles not modules not uh, these uh, different extensions uh, just one place to look that makes life uh, a lot uh, easier uh, we'll see that back uh, for instance in this uh, breezing form component and then you can have a preamble to a form where you can type in some uh, text uh, uh, please register for the member meeting uh, this and that and that and if you replace it by, by something like this article ENGB member meeting text article or article Dutch ledenvergadering text article then the same form when 
presented on the English version of your website will include the member meeting article being the English one and uh, which you can manage with uh, the fast runs tool and on the Dutch uh, side it will include the Dutch version so I know it's kind of a hack but it made my life a lot uh, easier at point in time syntax being this so this is basically a tweak on the article uh, anywhere thing from no number I contacted Peter and then he didn't feel like having this option in art no, no number article manager so yeah then you have to do something else uh, again this is the search syntax and it replaces this by this just admire it and or try to figure out what it does after Peter's session uh, this evening another twist uh, that I took and that's again with uh, breezing forms uh, uh, translating it uh, by using this embedded text that's fine if you just have one website where the the content is uh, relatively dedicated but for forms where I use this breezing forms thing uh, I ended up reusing that on different websites and then I said okay let's reuse the language structure by offered by Joomla just use the uh, the language constants uh, so instead of actually well normally it would say the text here and I put together some crazy syntax where I say this is it so it could be this is the placeholder for the text which is actually stored in the ed file just as any uh, uh, whatever uh, uh, PHP thing which is JTEXT and basically what it does it finds this one and you see it outputs some PHP which actually queries well does what any other uh, component does and it uh, allows me to uh, uh, for the name uh, I have one set of translations nam name no uh, whatever something it's one any file I can just copy it over and reuse it in whatever uh, form I want and if the tool is not supporting multilingual I'll force it to obviously you need to initialize that uh, uh, you have to load uh, the language so there's one macro so to speak to load uh, this item I realize it's going quite fast but okay coming days I'll put it up and now I've got a question for you do you want since it's now one so either you could be starving or we give you a glance of the future uh, of things in the pipeline uh, pipeline yeah since we're here uh. so what's in the pipeline obviously Joomla 3 well I'm not going to force Angel uh, Angel's hand uh, <laughs> to say when it's ready because that's a, uh, a typical point of discussion uh, developers always tend to be over uh, optimistic and then customers are disappointed <laughs> support uh, for all native Joomla associations so when modules comes in it will be associated and this is a big favorite of mine uh, which is giving Angel a headache <laughs> uh, I want to have a fallback language um, uh, obviously it's easy now to uh, create multiple sets but if I add Japanese uh, to uh, as a new language and I don't have any content in Japanese I just wanted to display my default language whatever I choose and choose it to be English then just display English if the article content is not available it's something I would very much desire in, uh, in Joomla itself and well Angel is taking votes on how important this uh, feature is it would make life a lot easier if that's in then you don't need to force a lot of translation you just have at least at all points you have some content it's not necessarily what you want yes Max Yeah. 
I know. I'm a user, so I know. <laughs> uh, one click copy update, so that when you have Japanese, you just press one button and it does the whole shebang that we just dus discussed about. Uh, exporting, importing content in XLIF format. Uh, that's a really nice XML, whatever standard uh, format, supposedly used by uh, real professional translation agencies. Could be very be beneficial. Uh, this is also a point of headache, so Max could talk to Angel about that and how to support Virtumart. And now he's awake uh, for. Uh <laughs> in this because now everybody does his own thing to some extent and yeah it will converge and the sooner the better and anything else you want i challenge you just get a mail out to uh, angel or his website now i give back the word to angel to show some of the or uh, shall i do it uh, can i do it this is some pre screenshots of the Joomla 3 uh, version where it shows uh, the association bar for articles, categories, contacts, menu items, and news feeds. Uh, those are the ones at this point in time being supported by Joomla. This is how the translation dashboard looks in, if I'm missing something, Angel, you should point it out, in uh, Joomla 3. Slightly different, more of the same. Uh, the uh, translation, this is for banners, so you still have your left and your right hand side, but the next slide will show the option to suppress the left hand side so that you have more space uh, for your article editing. View of the verification of inconsistencies. Same thing, you can check uh, which ones you want to check for inconsistency, do, do batch uh, processing. And yeah, then we are at the summary questions and I'll put up some advertisement for a good cause that I support. So I challenge you come by the JPhoto booth where I hope to see all of you to get a nice memento or memento against the background of your choice. And we can talk about this cost it's a disease my daughter is suffering from and the patient organization uh, I support. So I take the liberty of uh, putting in some blatant advertisement for that. Any questions at this point? Yes. I think I'll give that question to Angel. Uh, starting at the beginning for some for some stations, maybe K2 or Flexi content, and, and gradually we yeah, and gradually gradually we will generalize it. But it's a uh, it's a uh, complex. It's complex uh, because how the extension is is, is developed.